Slander is perhaps the most effective way to discredit that which seems reasonable otherwise. If you cannot contradict a message, you can simply discredit the messenger and effectively prevent his message from being pondered upon. This is why prophets from Moses to Muhammad have been targeted with slander throughout history. One such incident goes back to the Victorian era when a play was organized that was filled with insults and disinformation about Prophet Muhammad. Naturally, the play faced serious criticism by Muslims and inspired protests. Interestingly, however, these protests were led in part by a son of British Methodist and the grandson of a preacher, a man named William Henry Quilliam. William was born in 1856 in Liverpool to an affluent family and was brought up as a Methodist. By the age of 22, he was a solicitor and what was described in Liverpool's weekly paper of the time as the unofficial Attorney General of Liverpool. In 1882, William visited southern France and then crossed over to Algeria and Morocco. It was in Morocco that he discovered the path that he would thread for the rest of his life, the path of Islam. William converted to Islam at the age of 32 and changed his name to Abdullah, meaning God's servant, and soon became a very active member of the Muslim community. Upon his return from Morocco, he used the 2,500 pounds donated to the Muslim community by the Afghan prince Nasrullah Khan to establish the Islamic Institute in Liverpool Mosque, which would be the first mosque to be constructed in Britain. There, Muslims prayed in congregation, and in the basement they ran a printing press. It was there that Mr. Quilliam's famous three editions of the Faith of Islam and the Islamic Review Monthly Journal were published and later distributed to some 20 countries. His service to the British community was notable as well, at a time when many British mothers sought a refuge for their children born out of wedlock. Abdullah established a Medina house where the children would be cared for until they could be adopted. He also started a college where a wide range of topics were taught to Muslims and non-Muslims alike. As a minority, however, Abdullah and his community suffered a great deal of harassment at the hands of those who did not want their message to be heard, from physical attacks to loud interruptions of the sermon at their mosque. And so Abdullah did what he was instructed by the prophets to do. He chose to become an embodiment of the message through his actions. This great man passed away at 76 years of age and was buried among other prominent Muslim converts such as Mrs. Headley and Pekdol. His message, though, continues to be passed on.